Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Amen. Amen. The question for us today is, do we still need the Ten Commandments? Do we still need God's law? Judy, can you come up? <laughs> We're going to do a little experiment here today. Uh-oh. Oh, it's a sinner. <laughs> <laughs> I honor my mother. I know. <laughs> so just stand there, right up there. Okay. Close your eyes. This won't hurt a bit. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I trust you, Jeff. I trust you. Yeah, sort of. Sorry, I should have worked on <laughs> So, my question to you is, what can you tell me about what I just put on you? It was cold. Little slimy. <laughs> okay. So now open your eyes, and I'm going to give you a mirror so you can look at what it is I put on you. <laughs> it's not from the parking lot, I swear. It's mud from the Delaware River, so it's got oh, a therapeutic value to it. So my question. Oh, mask one. <laughs> there you go. That's later. So my, <laughs> so my question for you is. When I put the mud on your face, did you know that it was mud? Did you recognize it no. as mud? No. So when I gave you the mirror, did you recognize that it was mud? Yes. Okay, so looking at what we have right here, what would you like to do next? Wash the mud off. <laughs> <laughs> so a nice washcloth and towel. And thank you. <laughs> so the Ten Commandments are like a mirror. The purpose of the mirror is to reveal to you that your face is dirty. The mirror is not to clean your face. The mirror tells you that you need the washcloth to get your face clean. The law is like this mirror. When we look into it, we recognize that there's something wrong and that we need to do something about it. We know that we can get our face clean with the washcloth. Just as by faith, we believe that Christ can help us fulfill the law. And because we don't like our face dirty, we are change our actions so we don't get our face dirty again. And then we go and we share others what has happened. Judy, what would you tell somebody else? Besides, don't go to Jeff and he'll smear mud on your face. <laughs> You'd go and you would tell others that others that you saw that had mud on your face. You would assist them with recognizing this. This is the second part of our sermon series, looking through Luther's small catechism. And Luther wrote the two catechisms, both small and large, after traveling through, uh, traveling through the countryside and realizing that there was a lot of inconsistency and people who really didn't know the word and the meaning of the law or the gospel. What's interesting is that Luther was very specific in how he organized the small catechism. He put law first. So the Ten Commandments, the law. The second part, which you heard last week, he put the Apostles' Creed to show God's grace. The third section, the Lord's Prayer are seeking and asking grace, and the fourth part, the sacraments, God's grace through us. Luther often stated that the first duty of the gospel pe preacher is to declare God's law and to show us the nature of sin. And based on the number of sermons that he wrote about that, Cl Luther clearly wanted to emphasize that point. He taught that the Ten Commandments are the means by which God, God begins and completes his work begins and completes his work. I don't know that I had ever thought of the Ten Commandments from that point of view. An Old Testament law that helps us complete God's work. I think we tend to view the law as something that is restrictive, something as a restraint to us, something to help keep us in check. But what if we were to look at the law in another way? If we looked at the law through an act of God, one who wants us to be aware of our shortcomings and show that we are in need of his help and grace. 
I know for me, the gospel is much easier to view as being done, led through an act of God. But for Luther, the two laws, the two ways of interpreting the law, were completely intertwined. The law shows us our failure to live up to God's will, who brought through the promises of help, forgiveness, and grace, and through the Holy Spirit will bring us and comfort us and create faith. The first time I ever tried to understand this, I was a, in a Lutheran's confession class taught by a Lutheran bishop in an Episcopal seminary. That's something else. <laughs> the person teaching was William Lazarus, who I think pastor would probably know. He was a retired bishop from the New York Metropolitan Synod and was one of the most word smith word exacting person I had ever met. And to this day, when I read anything he's written, I can still hear his voice in my head. I'm sure you all have somebody who sort of touched you that way. So Professor Lazarus explained two views on the law. And it went something like this. God creates and judges and provides the law to us. The law reveals the fact that we are unable to fill the law and ask by us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we by faith Forgiveness by righteousness of Christ, he is able to fulfill the law for us. And this is how the law is both the beginning and the end. And we, all, and, we, and we all have that same blank look. So it was early in the morning, maybe too early in the morning, but no one in the class said anything. We were trying to recoup, I think, from what he had just that quickly volleyed right out to us. And when we didn't respond to us, he came over and he took my arm and he stood me up and he walked me over to a window and he opened the window up and it's February in New York City. And he looked at me and he said, how do you feel? And of course, I said nothing. Mm -hmm. And he said, are you cold? Yes. Why are you cold? I'm not dressed warm enough to be standing next to an open window. So what do you need? I could probably use a coat. If, would you take my coat if I took it off and I offered it to you? Yes. And at that point, he took his coat off and he put it around me. I was thinner then. Um, and Bishop Lazarus was a really big man. And his coat was kind of engulfed me as I stood there. And so he looked at me and he said, what would you do now? What if you saw somebody else in the same situation? And I replied, I'd help them. And then he began to give his lesson again, slower. You felt cold, you were not prepared, and therefore unable to make yourself warm on your own. Being cold, you knew that you needed more clothing. I offered you my coat, and you, believing it would keep you warm, took it. It's too big for you. But by giving you this coat to you, now you understand that there are others that need the same thing. And you will go out and look for others who are cold. The cold was our mirror for our lesson that day, and it makes me think about what kind of mud is on my face and all our faces that we're not seeing. I wonder if the mud is there because, and we don't recognize it because we're too busy. Do we find ourselves often saying, I just haven't had time to go help. I just can't fit this in my schedule. Or, as soon as I can, I'll be over. But what is our reaction when we do recognize what we have on our face? When we do see our actions for really what they are? Do we then complain about going to the food store and we can't find that particular box of cereal that we like? Or as we're standing there in the aisle, do we recognize that there are people in the world without enough to eat? Do we go back home after volunteering here at Family Promise and actually realize that we have a home to return to? What about us being a mirror to someone else? The neighbor who you see moving in and out on strange hours who you realize has an addiction problem? Or a college student thinking about really drastic me measures. When their grades aren't well enough and they know their parents are coming. At Rutgers, there was a point in time where we were having students almost once every 10 days committing suicide. 
one of them was an Asian student who had not done well that semester, was going to be taken out of the school, but his parents were on their way. He decided to choose suicide rather than ask for help. There are times when we can see more objectively what's happening than others. The fact that you have to be willing to take the risk to tell someone that there's mud on their face. Are you brave enough to say something? Luther stressed the view that the relationship between law and gospel was the work of God once we recognized our need for it. That the righteousness of God not only came from Christ to have us fulfill the law, it's actually the righteousness of Christ that fulfills the law for us. He takes us in, he reveals us, he reveals the mud on our face and the cold we feel, and then by faith we ask for the washcloth and the coat. I'd like to close to this today with a quote from St. Augustine. The law was given in order that we might seek grace, and grace was given that we might fulfill the law. And may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.